Welcome to this demonstration of multi-layer IP optical restoration using Sedona Systems NetFusion Restoration app. The demo, which was staged with commercial routers and optical network systems in Telefonica's global CTO lab, consists of four parts. The first section shows the visualization of the Telefonica lab that was discovered by the NetFusion Discovery platform. The second part demonstrates the simulation of a fiber cut and use of the NetFusion Restoration app to understand and analyze the network state during the restoration process. Next, we demonstrate an actual optical failure in the Telefonica lab and show the establishment of new optical connections taking different paths to restore IP MPLS traffic. Finally, once the fiber is fixed, the network is reverted to using its original state without traffic loss. Let's start with a look at the lab environment. This diagram represents the multi-layer, multi-vendor network environment in Telefonica's lab. The IP MPLS layer consists of Nokia, Juniper, and Huawei routers. The colored lines represent a 2 by one gigabit per second IP link bundle and three 10 gigabit per second IP links. The optical layer consists of ADVA, Corient, and Huawei optical network elements, where each is in a different optical domain. Let's start with the visualization of the discovered Telefonica lab in the NetFusion Explorer UI. The optical layer is on the bottom, and the IP MPLS layer is overlaid on top. Each object on the map represents a site. Here we have five sites containing both IP and optical objects, and one unnamed site containing only optical network elements. The three shaded areas represent the optical domains. Corient is in purple, ADVA is in gray, and Huawei is in green. Selecting Site 1 on the left shows that it consists of a Juniper MX240 router and a Corient Rodem, which is a reconfigurable optical add drop multiplexer. Now let's look at Site 2, sitting between the Corient and ADVA optical domains. The site hosts a Huawei router and both Corient and ADVA Rodems. Clicking on Site 4, we dive deeper to see that it contains a Huawei router and two Huawei optical elements, an OTN switch, and a Rodem. The site also contains another ADVA Rodem. Site 5 contains an Alcatel Lucent, now Nokia, router. Now let's look at IP links. When clicking on the top IP link, it turns orange. The green shows the optical connection path that the IP link traverses. In this case, the IP link goes through the ADVA and Corient domains. Examining another IP link, we see that it is mapped through the Corient and Huawei optical domains. Now let's examine some of the LSP paths in the IP MPLS layer. Opening Site 3 shows that it is the source of two LSPs whose destination is Site 1. Clicking on one of them reveals its path both in the IP MPLS layer, in orange, and in the optical layer, in green. We can also see a linear per-hop representation of the path in the sidebar. Going back, let's examine the second LSP. Following the orange lines on the map, the LSP's optical path goes from the top Site 3 through Site 4 and Site 5, through an optical network element, and finally ends at Site 1. The sidebar shows both the LSP path and the optical path with each router and optical hop. Notice how the optical connection path goes back to the IP MPLS layer in the middle of its route. Now that the network has been discovered and visualized, we will demonstrate the NetFusion Restoration app working in a simulation mode that does not affect the network. The app prepares a restoration plan prior to a failure ever occurring. This plan accounts for every possible optical failure, identifying the order in which to establish new optical connections so that IP links with the most traffic are restored first. This systematic process ensures that IP links carrying the highest volume of traffic are restored as soon as possible. While not demonstrated in this simulation, the NetFusion plan also determines the order in which they are to be reverted to using their original optical connections where the goal is zero traffic loss at the IP MPLS layer. The NetFusion restoration app is easily accessed from the UI. Let's simulate a failure of this optical link. Note the two red IP links are down due to this optical failure, and the sidebar shows that LSPs are failing to route traffic. The top right shows that we are working on a network snapshot at a specific date and time. In the bottom timeline, we see there is 100% traffic loss for the IP links affected by the optical failure. This timeline also shows the percent of available bandwidth restored over time. The initial action taken, according to the restoration plan, is to automatically establish new optical connections. 
The optical connection corresponding to the IP link with the highest traffic is established first so that IP traffic is restored as rapidly as possible. The app then establishes a new optical connection for the second IP link, which has the second highest amount of traffic. Now let's see how this process develops step by step. Here, the optical link marked as down is affecting two IP links in red. Both LSPs we reviewed earlier are now down, which is not surprising given that both IP links connecting to side 1 are down. Going back to the timeline, by clicking on this circle, we see that 83% of the traffic is restored. Now the second LSP in the list is no longer red because the IP MPLS layer rerouted it. This is the 9 gigabit per second LSP, which is the LSP carrying the most traffic. Let's click down here to see which IP link has been restored. Now we'll view its new optical connection, which is the orange link that goes around the failure in the Corient domain. Let's go back to the LSPs in the sidebar and then click on the timeline to see what happens when the second IP link is restored. As we can see, 100% of the traffic has been restored and both LSPs are now up. Clicking here shows there are two IP links. One of them is purple, which means it is active and runs at or above 80% utilization. The other IP link in the sidebar is red for failed. The app has not yet restored this IP link because it is not essential for the recovery of all traffic under the current network conditions. Only when we view the state of the network at the end of the restoration process by clicking the timeline again is this last IP link restored. Now let's see the restoration plan put into action in a live network. As a reminder, this upper left block represents the Telefonica lab prior to a failure. Notice that two IP links traversing the Corient domain share an optical link. This is the optical link that we will fail in order to demonstrate the NetFusion restoration app restoring the network according to the plan we just reviewed. Once the failure is resolved, we will demonstrate the network being reverted to the same state it was prior to the failure. To induce a fiber cut, we perform a cold start on the Corient line card using a Corient EMS. This will cause the line card to go down as if the fiber has been cut. In the NetFusion Explorer map, both the optical link and the IP links using it turned red to show they are down. The LSPs are unrouted. Let's wait for the IP link to be restored. Since various analog properties of the transmission system must be carefully balanced, optical networks cannot quickly switch connections. Let's examine the IP links between Site 1 and Site 5. One of these links is already up, and its LSP is routed along the longer optical path in the Corient network. Let's wait for the second IP link to come up. Now the second link is up, and the second LSP is routed around the failure in the Corient domain. Now the third IP link is up. Let's examine the LSPs. The larger LSP carrying 9 gigabit per second traffic is routed. The smaller LSP carrying 1.9 gigabit per second traffic is still unrouted since it takes a while to restore the IP links it traverses and for the IP MPLS layer to reroute the LSP. Now the smaller LSP is routed and the IP MPLS layer has been restored back to normal despite the failure that still exists in the optical layer. 
Let's look at an LSP path to verify it is routed around the optical failure. We are using a Zabbix tool to capture SNMP counters and look at the traffic that was measured across the network. The purple line represents the 9 gigabit per second LSP and the green line represents the 1.9 gigabit per second LSP. Notice the traffic dropping when the optical link failed. We can also see the traffic in the larger LSP recovering when the first IP link is restored and the traffic from the second LSP recovering when the second IP link is restored. Now that the fiber cut is fixed, it is time to revert to the optical connections that the IP links originally used. The goal is for this reversion to be completely hitless. NetFusion only reverts traffic when traffic utilization is low so that the network can withstand a temporary loss of some IP links without losing traffic. Here, we are reducing the amount of traffic to simulate such conditions. At the time of this live demo, we did not yet have this feature fully integrated into the NetFusion UI, so we are using a developer's control panel to direct the system to revert the IP links to use their original connections. This is a slow and gradual process where IP links momentarily go down and then up again once they are rerouted at the optical layer. The app ensures this reversion process is performed in a way that does not affect traffic. The LSPs remain up despite the fact that an IP link is down. Now the IP link is back up again using its original optical connection that went through the failed optical link. Let's wait for the second IP link to revert back to using its original optical connection. It turns red momentarily while its original optical connection is re-established. Remember, all traffic is diverted away from this IP link prior to this action being taken to ensure there is zero traffic impact. The LSPs are still gray, which means they have not been impacted. Now the second IP link is back on its original optical connection. Going back to the traffic measurement tool, we see that during this reversion process, traffic remained at the same level and there was no adverse impact on it. This concludes the live demonstration of multi-layer restoration and reversion performed in Telefonica's lab. Please note that since the recording of this live demo, the NetFusion restoration app has been fully integrated with the NetFusion solution, so additional tools are not required. For more information, please contact info at sedonasys.com or visit www.sedonasys.com.